What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto USA and today I'm going to talk to you about fill flash. So I know that we go over a lot of different times crazy modifiers that people may not have seen or hopefully some more advanced topics but I also always like to make sure that there's a resource there for people who are just getting into flash and just kind of learning what all this stuff was all about and so that's why I like to cover topics like fill flash and stuff like that. Next week we have a really cool one on negative fill um, but this week we're going to talk about fill flash just in and of itself. And essentially, fill flash is just what it says. It's filling in uh, dark spots, essentially. It's, it's, it's helping to decrease the contrast of the image. A lot of the times, too, whenever you're outdoor shooting and you're using high-speed sync, you're actually just using fill flash because I have a, a different definition. We've talked about this before, but I have a different definition of overpowering the sun than what a lot of people has. So a lot of people... Uh, just think in their brain, oh, I'm just going to ramp it up to an eight thousandth of a second, the background will be dark, that's overpowering the sun. For me, overpowering the sun is physically changing the direction that the shadows are coming. So if, you know, the the sky is dark and the person's lit well, but their shadows are still going the direction that the sun is making those shadows go, then you haven't overpowered it. You're just filling in the shadow that you've created with the sun. So it's the same idea, only we're going to do it in studio. And the cool thing is, is there's a couple of different ways to do fill flash. So, uh, and I call it fill flash, but just fill lighting, for example, because one of the methods we're going to use for people who always say, you know, I can't afford to buy two lights right now. A lot of times you don't need two lights. A lot of times you can use a light and a reflector. This is this is the the medium sized Pro Photo reflector. Um, all the Pro Photo reflectors, just so you know have uh, one side of them that's white and the other side of it's got a color. This one I believe is sun silver. Correct. It's sun silver on this one. So you can get uh, sun silver ones. You can actually get uh, one of the reflectors with the negative fill side of, or black on the other side. So you can have fill and negative fill and uh, one reflector. Um, we don't do five in ones just because we found that um, the material holds up a lot better and we can make uh, pretty hardcore stuff if we stick to just one or the other. So a lot of times you're going to see uh, white on one side and either silver, sun silver, gold, uh, black, or we have translucent reflectors too. Like I said, this is the medium size. I think it's about 33 inches. And the uh, the large size is pretty big. It's like 50 inches. I just don't have one with me to show you guys. So, But what's cool is, is you can do, you can fill in a shot with just a bounce card. I'm going to show you both. I've got also set up here uh, a, a B1X with a gigantic shoot through umbrella. Uh, and that's going to be my fill flash for this uh, whenever I'm using an actual flash to fill in the shot. So I'm going to show you both ways. That way, like I said, if you have a couple of lights and you can use this, it's great. One of the reasons I prefer using a flash over something like a reflector is I have a little more control over my output. You can actually, um, we did a couple of weeks ago, we did um, a talk where we were talking about ratios between 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, so on and so forth. So same thing, the thing that I like about having a fill flash is I have that control over it. So with a reflector, a lot of the times it's kind of, you know, backing it in, taking it out. And, and granted, you could, you could use a light meter to kind of figure that stuff out. But for me, it's just always a lot quicker on a flash. But that being said, if you only have one flash, this is an awesome way of doing it. And you don't even have to go, um, you don't even have to buy a reflector. You can literally go to a craft store and get a piece of foam core or a white poster board, whatever you want to do. I mean, if, if, you are, if you're really in a pinch, you can go into your kitchen and grab some aluminum foil and just hang it there and, and get a little bit of fill in too. The silver is always a little more specular, so you just have to be careful of it, but you have those options, which is really great. So for today, I'm going to show you with the flash and I'm going to show you with a reflector. Um, if anybody asks, I think this is just a like a little Westcott reflector holder. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, for the longest time, I used to just use um, alligator clamps and just uh, A-clamp stuff to things. So, But this thing's pretty great. It lets me kind of pivot the uh, reflector however I want to do it. So I do like that. So let me see if you guys have any questions so far before we start taking some pictures. Oh, Pete's in the house. What's up, baby? Um, Eric, hey, guys. Hey, guys, everybody. Dude, Eric. Using the A1 at a bad mitzvah tomorrow, man. I hope you have uh, have fun shooting with it, man. I love I love that that little booger. So cool. So I've got a subject. We're gonna do like I said. We're going to fire this uh, with a flash first. Uh, just so you guys know, 
uh, my main light's going to be this four foot RFI Octobox right here. It's running through a D2 1000. So uh, just because in the studio for me personally, I like the D2s and the D1s and stuff because I can crank the modeling lamp up and get the subject's people to close a little bit more. And you'll see me turn the modeling lamp on here in a second. It's, it's just, it's more powerful, especially when you're starting to crank it through like, a, you know, a big soft box that's double diffused. I just personally like it better. Uh, it's upside, the B1X does a really, really good job. And so does the, the new B10 with the brighter modeling lamps. Uh, I always, whenever I had a B1 was shooting in studio, I always had a, trouble getting those people's to um, close down a little bit more. So four foot Octobox, double diffused, D2-1000. Um, my camera settings, F8, uh, ISO 160 and 250 of a second. This is going to be on 1B and I'm just going to, we're going to start with this flash off. I'm actually going to move this out of the way so this doesn't have anything to do with the shot itself. So we're going to start with the flash first, just so you guys can see uh, the subtlety, and we'll, we'll mess around with it just a little bit. Uh, we don't need to necessarily go through the ratioing aspect of it because we've done that before. So um, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start first. I'm going to take a shot with no fill flash. Um, I'm going to take a shot with, um, with just a stop down, so a two to one, and then I'll take another one with two stops down, four to one, just so you can see the precision that you would have with a modifier. And then we're going to just use the bounce card for people who are um, want to see how well the bounce card works. So that's what we're going to do. So Kate, if you don't mind stepping in here, I'm going to just confirm that my B1 is still asleep. Actually, it's off, so let's... Nope, it's still asleep, so we're good. Cool, so the, don't have to worry about the B1 getting in there. Say hey to everybody, Kate. Hey! <laughs> if you watch this, I'm sure you, on a regular, I'm sure you know Kate. So cool. So once again, I've got my um, settings the way that I want. I'm going to fire off a shot here. Make it right here. And then here we go. Take a tiny step this way. Hopefully I'm not standing in front of you guys. Here we go. Three, two, chin down just a little bit. Chin up just a skosh. There you go. You went too much. There you go. Three, two, one. Perfect. So here's a shot. Straight out of the camera. Um, let me get you guys over to. You may describe. No, I got it. So, um, so here's the shot straight out of the camera. No fill. This is just the four foot octa. It's a really soft modifier. So you can tell the shadows. <clears throat> pardon me. The shadows feather really, really nicely. It's a, it's a, it's one of my favorite soft boxes. For me, it's always, it's not too big, it's not too small. At least in the space that I work a lot of the times, the five foot's a little unwieldy. I just love the four foot octa. So this is, it's beautiful. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to add in the B1X. And with the B1X added in, we are going to, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna double confirm everything that we are good, perfect. So. Because I'm adding in the B1X, we're gonna um, I'm gonna remeter and take a TTL shot. Uh, so, and we're gonna set that to the first. Make sure we go ahead on all the B. Perfect. So TTL shots. Uh, I'm going to set my group B to one stop down from group A. So that should give me a two to one ratio. So I'm gonna go in really tight right here for this shot. Perfect. So let me. Go into manual mode. Yep, it's up close and personal. Right here, three, two, one. So there we go. The shadows are filled in a little bit more. So if we compare, let me pop this up right here, the previous shots, here we go. So you can see, other than my uh, composition changing a little bit, you can see that the shadows are filled in a lot more here. So you can see how much more contrasty this is compared to this. And so that's just a basic two to one ratio. And, and for anyone who's wondering, I am shooting this through a big translucent umbrella uh, as my fill flash through the B1X. So it's just this gigantic translucent right here. And I'm actually just kind of using the edge as the fill. Just like I'm feathering the, the four foot away from Caitlin, I'm also feathering the fill a little bit further away. So cool. So that was your fill flash. Once again, filling in the shadows a little bit more with a, um, two to one ratio. We can back it down a little bit more if I wanted to. I think it looks pretty nice. I'm gonna leave it there. But if I made it a baseline and flat 
just so you guys can see. Let's go back to TTL mode just so I can get this thing out of here. Cool. So we're going really, really tight for this shot. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we're going really tight for this TTL shot right here. So there we go. That's with um, both flashes filling in. So you can see here. Actually, let's do a wider shot because I want to I want to side by side it. Here we go. There we go. Oh, I took the shot in TTL, so that's why it, it got mad at me. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to have to back that exposure down just a skosh because I forgot to flip it back into manual mode. The one thing that I preach all the time, and I forgot to do it. So, cool. Let's just back it down just a touch. Oh, yep. That's on a JPEG shot, so it's not going to give me that much latitude. All right, anyway, whatever. Let's go here. So, here, here, here's everything flat to flat, so you can see uh, it's... Definitely not 100% even on this side, which is fine. It still gives me a little bit of the shadowing that I like. Uh, you know what? I want to go here. Sorry, guys. That's going to drive me bonkers if I can't back that down because it's just, it's just too much. There we go. So you can see that I definitely have more fill here on the side. So because my big uh, soft box is back, or my big umbrella is backed up a bit, it's not influencing as much. It's just filling in the shadows really, really nicely. So... I think that looks pretty dang good. So now, and let me see if you guys actually have any questions before we go to the card. Uh, what's up? Thomas from Kansas in the house? Everybody in the house? What's up? Everybody. Let's see. I'm just making sure that nobody has any questions before I go into anything deeper. Rock and roll. Cool. So we're going to go to the bounce card. So let me put the B1X to sleep. Just do it from the air remote. Just hit head. If you guys... Uh, didn't know what the head button means on your air remote. It just simply gives you the ability to turn the head on or off. Or uh, for the matter of your battery powered stuff, the head button actually just puts it to sleep. So cool. So you do have some control with your bounce card uh, in the way that you move it closer and further away from your subject. The downside to any time that you're moving this around, you don't have as much precision. And also because you're changing the the size and shape of this thing. So if I wanted to back the fill off a little bit and I backed it off too much, um, it's not going to give me the same light quality because the size of the modifier in relationship to the subject got smaller. So it changes. The upside is the working distance with a lot of this stuff uh, is pretty close, so it doesn't make too big of a difference. But if it's something that you're really worried about, you might just want to get a bigger piece of uh, bigger reflector, bigger piece of foam core, something like that. You could use a big V flat. I just I have black V flats. I just don't have any you know big white V flats. I should probably make some, um, but that's neither here nor there. So cool. So let's go. Let's do another A B comparison shot. That way you can see with no reflector. And I'm going to back this out of the way, just so it doesn't get too crazy on me. So. Awesome. I'll remember not to stay in TTL this time. So here we go. Chin down right there. Three, two, one. Good. That's a little, a little over. Let me back it off a little bit, about a half a stop. Cool. Let's see where we are. Looks pretty good to me. So cool. Actually, it's still a little hot, so I'm going to back it off another stop. Jump back in there for me one more time, Kate. Here we go. That's way better. Way better. Perfect. So, you can see... Hi. Oh, what's up? Belfast in the house. I see ya. Um, winding down after an eight-hour shoot, man. That's, that's beastly. Hopefully it went well for you. So, cool. So, this, once again, is the shot. No... Ref no uh, reflector in here for the fill flash. So now I'm going to slide that reflector in. So here we go. Let's get you back over here, Kate. And so once again, you, you just obviously want to try to get it in as close as you can get it while it's out of the frame. I don't care so much about it being in the frame because it's not, this is an instructional thing. So, but I'm going to go in pretty close right there. I'm also trying to maintain like, well, the, the goal was to stay at about like, 
midsection and higher, but I keep backing off for some reason. So let's see, let's go in now. I'm in manual mode, so the light's locked off. So we should be able to see the difference now, fill and no fill. There we go. So let's go A, B these bad boys. Cool. There we go. So you can see just with a bounce card, you're able to fill in a lot of those shadows. So if you didn't want as much contrast, you can get that. So you can see it fills in nicely here on her arm. It's gonna drop off a little bit lower because it's a smaller uh, reflector than say a big piece of foam core, a big V flat. So you're not gonna get the evenness all the way down, but it still does a, a really good job. So I could, you know, if, if it was midsection and up like a, a half body portrait, like I was saying that I was trying to take a photo of, it would be, oh, that's, let's see if we can back that. Come on, stop fighting me. This trackpad just scrolls too quick. So, but like I said, if it was more of a half body shot, the, the shadows would be filled in really, really great. So once again, you don't have to buy a second flash to get, uh, good results with stuff. I mean, a lot of times you can use the fill from, uh, say if you're outdoors, for example, one of the things, and if you haven't already seen it, I did another video a couple of weeks ago when we were in California where I showed you how to um, match your flash to the sun or match your flash to the ambient. So you could use the ambient light that's outside as your fill flash and then just go you know, pop in a little bit of flash to, to give it some directionality. Same thing. So you don't always need a whole bunch of lights to do the job. So I would say if you're just starting off, you, I would tell everybody all the time, if you just have it in the budget to get a whole bunch of lights, get a whole bunch of lights, that's fine. But if you're just starting off and getting into the flash game, one flash, a piece of foam core or a reflector can get you a long ways. And it's a really, really great thing to know about fill flash. I feel like my photography, and I was, I was telling this to, I was talking to somebody at WPVI about this. I feel like my photography really jumped once I understood fill flash more. Uh, I, I was always really good at putting the light where I wanted the light, but I never really understood why the fill flash mattered so much. And once I really kind of grasped and, and worked harder on getting my fill flash the way it, or the, my fill light the way that it should be in each one of my shots, I feel like my, my photography just skyrocketed. So hopefully this was some cool information. If, uh, like I said, if you are, were unaware of what fill flash was or looking for different way, or I keep saying fill flash, but I have this big reflector, fill light um, is, or if you you know you had any questions about this, so hopefully this answered some of it for you to show you how easy it is just to get great shots with you know minimal stuff. I did it with the D2 1000. I could have easily done all of this stuff with an A1, an A1 and a reflector through a, a big shoot through umbrella and I, and I would have been set. So it doesn't require, you know, four foot octas and thousand watt heads. I, I guarantee you I was probably maybe using 30% of the power this thing could actually do. So you don't need a whole bunch of crazy equipment. Like I said, a light, a reflector, and a lot of times if you, you could even use the sun outside as your, your main light and then you're, you're filled with the reflector. So hopefully once again, that was cool information. I'm gonna see if you guys have any questions before we roll out. Let's see. Oh, uh, Gustav, oh, my Pro Photo B1 fell and broke. I'm trying to look for the link, the service idea where I can send it to based on Miami. Oh, so Gustavo, what you should do is go to the uh, your My Pro Photo page uh, where you would download your firmware and stuff. And underneath the picture of your registered flash, uh, there should be a uh, link that says start a service claim. So go there, click the link, start the service claim, and you should be good to go. So let's see. Greetings from Spain. Uh, no, no apologizing for your English, man. Let's see, what is the importance of the position of both lights and the mood of the portrait, and how can it get more flattering portraits? So, um, light positioning for me just is what you're trying to achieve. So I have the light feathered off a little bit more because I didn't want as much of it on the background. Uh, and I also wanted uh, less of a potential hot spot. So instead of pointing the light right at Kate, I feathered it right past her. So I'm still using the size of the, the modifier. I'm just pointing it a different direction. So I think it just depends on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, I have it, I just have it up higher and, and pointed down just so it's more of a light from above. You could easily get a big four by six and just stand right in front of it and have it be a gigantic window. You just have to think in your brain, what is it that I'm trying to 
recreate with my shot? Am I looking for something that looks like window light? Am I, do I want something more, you know, dramatized with flash? So then you go, you know, less contrast or you go more contrast because you want it more dramatic. And then you, you make sure that the lights are, uh, a lot more directional and stuff like that. So there's just a lot of things that you have to think of whenever you're trying to decide what it is that you want to achieve. I think that's the first thing that you should think about whenever you're taking a shot. I think a lot of times people just go, I just want to take a cool photo as opposed to going like, what is the, what am I trying to tell with, or what am I trying to convey with the image? And I think if you, if you come at it from that standpoint, like I'm trying to create, you know, I'm trying to make it look like there is no flash or you know we're just using the window light or I'm trying to make it look like it's uh I'm trying to do day for night or, or something like that. So just think about what it is you're trying to accomplish and then I think you will start to decipher what it is that you're trying to what you need to get to where what you're trying to get to. Yes, Profoto USA, I see that I could have sent them to US support, but you know what? I've also I've also been told to send it through the portal, so get off me. Let's see, Chris, where can I send my Pro Photo Air Remote Repair? Teddy, same thing that I told to Gustavo. Go on to ProPhoto.com. Uh, go to your My Pro Photo site. Go to where you registered your Air Remote and uh, just start a service claim there. They're going to make you do it anyway, so you just might as well just go ahead and start doing that. You can call the office and stuff like that, and they have no problem with it. But just, they're going to tell you to start the service claim thing anyway, so just skip the extra step and do it now, and then you can get everything. So, so I'm sorry you're having problems with your air remote. So hopefully, let's see, just making sure that nobody else has any more questions. Ashley's in the house. I see a, a John David Pittman face slap, which I always love. So cool. Once again, I hope that was awesome information for you guys. I, I always want this to be a resource uh, for, like I said, beginners, you know, it, or intermediate to advanced users at Profoto, or if you just have anything that you want to see recreated. I just want this to be here so you can always go back and reference it. Or if you have a friend who's like, man, I'm thinking about getting into flash photography, what should I do? Like, hey, Chris Profoto is like always cranking out these videos that, that you can go and watch. They're free. They're always there, so you can go back and check them out. Uh, you can tell them that I ramble a little bit, but I still get to the point because I'm a gabber. Um, but hopefully that's it's cool information for you guys. And for anyone who's wondering about Phil Flash, hopefully you have a little bit more of an understanding on it. If you want to start getting deeper into uh, controlling your Phil Flash, you can go back and watch my video about uh, ratioing uh, your two lights together, uh, whether it be a one to one, two to one, three to one, or four to one, or eight to one. Um, I didn't mean to say three to one. Sorry, I meant to say one, two, four, eight. Sorry about that. So, but if you if you got a lot out of this and you're looking for the next step, go check that one out and check out a lot of other stuff. So in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to make sure that you guys don't have any other questions for me. Oh, so a couple things popped up. Gold or silver side when using flash, uh, once again, I think that has a lot to do with what it is you're trying to achieve. I personally never use the gold side. Um, it's just not a look that I like. So I generally, if I'm using my reflector in, in the studio, I'm either using silver or white. And if I'm outside and it's starting to get a little more golden hour-ish, I use the sun silver portion of um, this reflector just because it's... It's not too 80s-licious. So, but that's just me personally. If you, if you like the gold, gold, go with the gold. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely never going to tell you what's the right and wrong way of doing something. Um, let's see. David, I use Palsy Buff primarily because of cost issues. Anyway, you suggest getting into the ProPhoto ecosystem without breaking the bank up front. So totally. There's, um, so first and foremost is the A1, which is a great flash that you can use on or off camera however you want to. And the cool thing about it is it's a good step into the ecosystem in the first place. That's if you want to take advantage of battery-powered stuff, TTL-enabled stuff, and whatnot. You could also look into our D1 system, which is a really, really great monoblock. It doesn't have TTL, but it has a lot of control. And you can take advantage of all the light shaping tools that we have, which is really, really great. Um, as we always seem to come out with new products, you're going to find that a lot of people get really excited about new features and they upgrade and they sell off some of their old stuff. So you might be able to find some great stuff on the used market. You just need to, I would check it out before you, you go that route, but there's, there's lots of ways to get in the ecosystem. Like I said, it's not about 
having the most lights. It's about having a light and knowing what to do with it. So once again, you don't have, if you get rid of all your pulsey buff stuff and you decide I don't want, uh, or I, you know, I, I want just a B1, you can get a B1 and some reflector and, and, and a reflector and start doing some stuff with it that way. So you don't have to go bananas with like 50 lights. So hopefully that was, hopefully that helps you with you, with your question there. It, it's, I definitely don't want you to break the bank, but I also want you to make sure that you're, you're getting the right product for yourself. Let's see. In general, go to more contrasty portraits with men and women, or once again, depends on what you want. Uh, it's once again, yeah, it's, it's really a, what are you feeling? Like what's, what's the flavor of the shot? Um, most women don't like to be shot, at least in my experience, they don't like to be shot with really super hard edgy light. Uh, just because and people don't like to shoot with it because it's hard to control the shadows if you're not paying attention. So I think, you know, a gristled guy looks really, really cool with a whole bunch of shadows and his wrinkles showing stuff like that. So it's, I think, once again, it just kind of comes back to the what you're trying to portray and what you're trying to tell. So hopefully that was good. Greetings. Oh, man, everybody's popping up in here. What's up? Africa's in the house. So, so once again, I'm signing out of here. I hope that was awesome information. Hopefully... Uh, you guys got something out of it. Like I said, next week we're going to be covering negative fill. So if you want to see more about actually subtracting light away from the shot, come back next Friday. If you need to see any of the other videos, you can just go and check them all out. We have them all available here at Facebook, and we're also getting them over into YouTube too. So in the meantime, have an awesome day. Uh, have an awesome weekend, and shoot something cool. We'll see you next Friday. Later, guys.